Good evening and welcome to worship this evening as we gather together for a midweek Lenten service featuring Holden Evening Prayer. A special thank you to Bonnie and Nisa Tolfsted for sharing their musical gifts with us tonight. I also want to announce our Easter service is coming up. We will have an online worship experience at 9 o'clock on Easter morning, similar to this, where you can watch wherever in the world you might be. But if you are here in Holman and would like to come together and worship with the entire body present, uh, we will have a couple services over at the middle school as a drive-in service, where you drive in and you'll tune your radio into a particular station so you can hear what the pastors and musicians are saying and singing. We'll have communion together, sing and pray, and we will worship our risen Lord on Easter morning. Those services are at 8 and 1030, so we welcome you there. With those announcements concluded, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as we listen to our prelude.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our reading this evening comes again from the Gospel of Luke, this time the 14th chapter beginning in the first verse, then followed by verses 7 through 14. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, Jesus told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host, and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. And you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What would you do if you only had a short time left to live? Would you spend as much time as you could with the people you love? Would you eat your favorite foods? Would you travel somewhere you always wanted to visit? Would you try and check off all of the rest of the things on your bucket list? All of those possibilities seem like reasonable options. When push comes to shove, we try and do what makes us feel good, honored, lifted up, and secure. We live in a culture where there is an expectation that when we do something, we probably should get something good in return. Good feelings, good recognition, and so on. And so then it all ends up being about me. What comes least natural is thinking of someone else before ourselves. Yet Jesus, in his last few days on earth, taught his disciples and others around him that service comes before self. He taught humility before honor, sacrifice before selfishness, and love over luxury. Before he was raised up, Jesus bowed low on bended knee and washed the feet of his disciples and calls us to that life of service. Hard words for us to hear today when we're pretty much mentally and emotionally fatigued. During our Wednesday evening worship services, we're focusing on the welcome of Jesus. Tonight, Jesus teaches us yet again the privileged place at the table should be given to those we might not even think to invite. Jesus tells us to welcome the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. He follows the tradition of God's people since the first recorded words of Scripture which emphasize care for the poor, the widow, and the orphan. Those people who we might look right past, Jesus tells us to pay attention to, especially when we are most concerned with our own place 
at the table. Our lesson this evening begins with Jesus being invited yet again to another dinner at the home of a Pharisee, this time on the Sabbath. After noticing how guests would come and arrive and choose the best seat at the table, he instructs them where to sit at a wedding banquet. In short, it's better to take a more humble seat and ask to be moved up closer to the host than to assume one's position and then be demoted. But to the Pharisee who hosted the supper, Jesus redefined who should be the honored guest in the first place. Jesus explained that while it's human nature to want to invite our loved ones or those we want to impress, knowing that they could return the favor, don't invite them. Instead, invite those who have no chance in inviting you to dinner. If you do that, Your invite will be based purely on grace, a free and unwarranted gift with no strings attached. This is the kind of love that God bestows on us, and Jesus commands us to share that love with those who need it most. I see grace every time our community gathers at the Holman's Hope Community Dinner. If you have not attended one of those in the past, I encourage you to do so when they're up and running again. Every walk of life from our community is invited and sits shoulder to shoulder, sharing a meal and talking to their neighbor. And then after supper, the food bank provides produce, bread, and other staples that anyone can take home. No questions asked. And nobody's required to pay. There's a donation bucket But if you need to, you can walk on by. Everyone comes, and they bring themselves, their presence, their time, their conversation. I think that's a little bit of maybe a slice of heaven, maybe a slice of seeing the kingdom of God right here at the Holman Legion. Twice a year, Holman Lutheran Church prepares a meal, and we serve it. And many of you bake and bring desserts. Others take a turn in the kitchen. There are dishwashers and table wipers, greeters, and of course, eaters. And I look forward to those meals resuming in the future because that gathering of diverse people looks a little bit like the kingdom of God. Different ethnicities, life experiences, genders, social statuses, and all other human markers that describe a person are welcomed in. There is serving, there is eating, there is laughing, there is sharing. And money isn't required to be invited to that banquet. Everyone is welcomed in, and there's always plenty of food to go around. The dinner party with Jesus at the Pharisee's house gives us something to reflect on during Lent that may not be very comfortable. What if we truly welcomed in the poor, and differently abled as Jesus commands. Who would sit with the homeless person who smelled of life on the street and whose stomach rumbled the entire worship service? Who would wait with the elderly person to make sure their shared ride van picked them up after worship outside of the church? Who would give to a donation drive the food or the clothes that they themselves would want to wear, and not just the torn or ripped or ragged ones, or food that was out of date that we ourselves wouldn't want to eat? How would we serve with this same grace that Jesus is commanding us in this wide-open invitation? Giving up my seat at the table and putting someone else in the seat of honor, well, that's humbling, Inviting people to the party who I might not know or might not normally associate with, well, that's humbling too. It might even be intimidating. Maybe we wonder how our invitation would be perceived or if someone would think that, boy, I wonder if they have an alternate agenda. Why are they inviting me? But regardless of those hesitations, Jesus tells us that we are to invite them to the party. And that being in the seat of honor is not our place to be. It's about serving 
It's about inviting the poor in and sharing with them the abundance of God. During the season of Lent, as we reflect on our lives and we reorient our lives to God's kingdom ways, perhaps tonight's, perhaps tonight's lesson gives us a way to reframe our thinking. If we have more than we need and can invite more to the table, then as disciples, that's what we do. Jesus always says there's room for one more. And that one person may not think that they were even on anybody's radar to be invited, to be on the guest list. But for Jesus, the poor and those who are in need are always at the top of the list. And Jesus reminds us that they should be on top of our list too. A very real and scary statistic in our country is that 40% of Americans are one paycheck away from poverty. A car accident, a medical bill, a child needing to go to the doctor, a cutback in hours or being laid off from your job, that can happen at any time. And that statistic was from 2019. I can only imagine what those numbers are now after a year of pandemic. And so for two out of the every out of the five people, so for two out of every five folks watching worship with us tonight, worshiping wherever they are this evening, two of those five folks are this close to having poverty be a reality. Poverty is real. And so how as Holman Lutheran do we respond? I'm not going to try and come up with a list of concrete answers to that question tonight because I think we as a community are led by God's Holy Spirit to come up with those ways we meet people together. We discern Jesus' command of inclusivity together. But I do know that thinking how I would hope to be treated if I fell into poverty would hopefully be how I would treat those who are in poverty right now. The grace we give our neighbor should be, at a minimum, the grace that we hope we would receive. And so perhaps as you're thinking about donating food to a pantry, maybe that can of cream of mushroom soap from 1999 is not your best choice. And I say that only half jokingly because we got a can from 1999 a couple of years ago at Holman's Hope. And so we might want to consider that when we give, we give what we ourselves would want to eat. Or for example, when we do socks and underwear drives, maybe giving those socks with holes in them isn't the best idea if we ourselves would not want to wear socks with holes in them. Because we want to treat everyone with dignity and respect the way we would hope to be treated, and the way that Jesus treats us. And so I want to take this time as I close out this sermon this evening and thank you. And thank you because as Holman Lutheran, we are constantly discerning where the Holy Spirit is leading us to serve those in need. And we do so because that is the call of a disciple. But it can't happen without your shared time and your talents in your treasures. So thank you for your continued generosity that funds all of the outreach ministries of our church. Jesus and this story tonight calls us to be humble and calls us to serve and calls us to notice and to welcome in the poor just as Jesus does. And so may we serve with that same love that God and Jesus has shown us. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus, my chosen.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. peace.